it's good to see you. Welcome back here. We are on day number 10 of our Crafter's Companion Advent Calendar. So we're starting to get there into the month now, but we've got just after today, we've only got, I say only got 14 days still to go, you know, still got a number of days to be going when it comes to the Advent Calendar. But thank you once again for coming back here and seeing what we're going to be making from door number 10. It's always lovely to see the comments popping up when it comes to the videos, underneath the videos. As I said in the last one as well, well, I really, really do appreciate them. I read every single one. I get an email notification every single time one of you leave a comment. Trust me, I'm getting lots and lots of emails, but that is absolutely worth it. It's absolutely worth it. I want to make sure I read them all. I just unfortunately, because there is that many, which I am so grateful for, it's just not possible to reply to them all, whether of course it's on YouTube or whether it's the links that I share on Instagram as well as Facebook. So please just know that I do absolutely absolutely read every single one of them and they really are much appreciated. The other thing that's really appreciated as well when you're here is of course subscribing, hitting that bell notification every time a video I do that gets popped up here on my YouTube channel, then of course you'll be alerted. And then once you've watched that video, if you really like it, then give me a thumbs up. That would be really, really appreciated as well. But it is all about door number 10, day number 10 when it comes to our Crafters Companion Advent Calendar. So let's get stuck in. Let's dive all the way in, bringing it in and seeing what delights we've got from door number 10. Now, when it comes to door number 10, let's delve in. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. Zoom out, not in, Craig. And we're gonna look for door number 10. Now, door number 10, is it gonna be on the left or is it gonna be on the right? Let's see. Um, so yesterday, the ninth was on the right-hand side. I'm gonna say, yeah, here we go. Number 10, let's go in to the opening of number 10, and we have got, we've got Craig's favourite, and I say that quite loosely, glitter, let's get in there, he says, let's just, well oh, definitely well secure this year, that's for sure. Let's get in. There we go. We've got a full pot, gosh, a 15 gram bottle of glitter. I don't know why I'm shocked and surprised because I know what it is this year. But we've got our glitter. So we've got our pot there. So I suppose you're probably thinking, what's he going to do? Is he just going to make something and then he's going to put some glue on the card and then he's going to actually sprinkle the glitter on? Well, no, actually. We're going to make the glitter as an actual focal point. Now, similar to the glitter glues, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the one that I have already opened, just to save opening another one. So nothing different to one that I've just already opened. You can see there, it's exactly the same. Not that it would matter if there was any trickery or that, but not that there is. You can see they're both exactly the same. When it comes to the glitter, let's go there. It's just I'm going to, instead of opening up a new one, let's just use the one that I pre-prepped beforehand. And for this one, we're going to do six by six cards. So I've got my six by six card blank. So let's go from up above so that you can see what we've got. So I've got my six by six card. But what we're also going to bring in as well is we're going to bring back in our matte and layer dies. So we're going to use our matte and layer dies. And the two that we're going to be using, I've got kind of ready. The two that we're going to be using are the, the four inch, four by four, and then the three and a half by three and a half. So they're the ones that we're going to be using when it comes to what we're doing. Going to need some dew drops, some linen cardstock, lilac linen cardstock, and also some acetate. The other thing we're going to need is our double-sided adhesive sheets. So move all that out of the way. What we're going to do within this one here is you want your acetate to be a little bit bigger than that four by four matte and layer die. Now, of course, you might change the size, which is up to yourself, but I'm, the largest of the die I'm using is four by four. So let's cut that. So just so that's 
five in. So it just so happens, what I'm going to do is just pretty much make that five by five. What I'm then going to do, actually, I'm going to come down a quarter of an inch. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because we're going to neaten it. So it doesn't matter. So, got our acetate. And let's go in with our double-sided adhesive sheets. Now, if you don't have your double-sided adhesive sheets, you can be using your tacky glue. You're just going to have to give it a really light smear all the way across. Or you can use your permanent sprays. So we're going to take the backing off. Don't bend the backing just yet. And then we're going to go direct onto our double-sided adhesive sheets with our acetate. We're going to go in. Don't worry if it's not overly neat or that because we're going to end up trimming it anyway. So we're just going to press. If you've got your brayer, then of course you can use your brayer. Mine is somewhere. But I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm just going to smooth all this out. So we're going to smooth it all out. Let's take all of that and then just the excess sides. I've got a little bit of overhang of the tape. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm actually cutting the acetate. I'm not trimming the sticky sheet. I'm trimming the acetate. That's going to stop it from sticking to your scissors. Even although these are non-stick, the adhesive on the adhesive sheets is really strong. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set that to the side just for a moment. We're going to leave you hanging both for what I'm going to do. We're going to come in with our two layers. I'm going to come in with my matting layer dies. Let's just roughly chop that. And then we're going to come in with either your low tack tape or washi tape or anything like that. I'm going to tape that in. I'm going to tape that in. While we're here as well, I'm going to take that thanks die. So we're going to use the thanks die. The other thing we're going to use as well is just a couple of the outline dies from the timeless butterflies. So while we're doing that, and that's going to fit on the bottom, let's cut that out. We're going to go in with our plates and I probably won't need my magnetic shim so I'm going to take that out for now and then we're going to go to our G2 and feed that through as that feeds through don't worry about that noise if you're new to crafting because these matte and layer dies are straight edge dies that noise is normal I've then got our frame and not only that what I've then got is I've got that outline for thanks that we'll use just later so I'll still need that one so let's move that there for now that can go in the bin that can be used at some point and I don't think I need those dies again no I don't right move that out the way Hopefully this is not as a way to start glitching again, like the other day. I think we'll just hang fire for a second. So before we go any further, what we'll do is let's do these bits here and let's get that, let that sort itself out. I'm going to take my, just going to go in with my white multi-purpose here and then we're going to tape that down like so. What we'll do as well is let's do some butterflies. So I want to do three butterflies. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like small, medium and large. So let's take, let's do it kind of like the larger, larger one. Actually, 
before I do it in white, let's do it in the lilac. The lilac's going to be the base, so bear with me on my thought process. So, because I am going to kind of do a drop shadow, but the butterfly that's going to sit on top of that one, which is going to be white, is going to be slightly smaller. So therefore, I want to get my lilac ones right first. So I've gone kind of like a largest one. I'm then going to go in with want a little bit more of a mediocre one. Mediocre size. And then... A small, I don't want small, small, because my white one will be small, small. So for these, tape that down. And tape that down. Once again, I probably won't need my magnetic shim for this. So we're going to do cutting plate, top plate, uh, sorry, two cutting plates and frosted shim. That's then going to run all the way through. Take that one out. So we've got butterfly. Let's put butterfly. And then butterfly. We've got our outline that we'll stamp with just shortly. So that can go away. So I'm not using the actual sentiment stamp that comes with this. All that I'm doing is I'm just using the outer die. I don't need that now. That can go there. So now that I've got kind of like the three size butterflies that I want, what I want is a few smaller ones. So let's do... Let's do it. Small. Smallish. And then, actually, that's slightly smaller. And then there's a really small one. So let's put that all the way back. Let's put them back so I don't forget which one is. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle. I won't give you the actual numbers of these butterflies because you can use whichever ones you want. that one there and then these ones let's pop onto our white card let's tape that one down and I don't think I need to do any more cutting so we'll just use that one on its own yeah I'm going to feed that one through I'm going to get my card stock another bit of linen lilac so that what we can do is we can do our insert as always like I've been doing with all these videos so far I'm glad that you're liking as well just adding a little insert even although it's blank I'm glad that you're liking that there's that one there's that one and then there's that one so happy with them that can go there, that can go there. Let's put these ones back. Let's pop that one there. Then that one can go there. And then that one can go there. So let's be good and put them away. Of course, with the vintage butterflies, you can use the paper pad or the download that you get with it. But in all honesty, I very rarely do I use the actual butterfly paper pad. I always use the butterfly dies just as kind of like an aperture. Let's get them in. Let's put them away. I am determined to be tidying as I'm going, so forgive me on that one. Right. So let's. So we've got our frame, we've got our butterflies. What I'm then also going to do now is let's do the stamping and let's do the insert. And then what we can do is then start to add them all together. 
I'm going to put my dies away. I don't need them now. Right, insert. So my card blank is six by six. So let's take our lilac. This piece that I've got here is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So let's trim five and a half by five and a half. Let's take another piece of white multi-purpose, which is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And that's our insert done. Let's move the guillotine out of the way. So let's go in with the adhesive. And we'll add our insert so the insert is done. Follow around. I know I say this quite often, but for anyone that doesn't catch it or maybe hasn't heard me say this before, when I use my double sided tape, sometimes you'll see me go round like this, and sometimes you'll just see me going left to right. I'll either go all the way round or I'll just go strips all the way. There's no reason as to why I do one over the other, there's nothing specific. It, just I'm not really thinking about it it's just the way that I apply it so if you see me going round on one layer and across on another there's no specific reason that I'm doing that it's just something that I do without thinking so press that in I'm going to just make sure my card blank is exactly six by six which it is And then by adding the insert as well, even although we've not got anything written on it, stamped on it, printed on it, it's still going to create stability because you're going to have that little bit of weight on the front. So therefore, you want something in the middle that's going to stabilise it. So let's press it, that in. So there's our insert. Then let's do our stamping. And then we can get on with the glitter layer. Now for this one, I'm going to take, when it comes to my quick dry, I'm going to use the pale fig. So I'm going to lean over and go into the pale fig. Now for sentiment like this, if you stamp first, it's really, really hard to overlay the actual die. So therefore, what I would recommend is take just a little bit of adhesive from a tape runner or tape or your dots or something like that and then tape it down because of course you can't use your magnetic discs because then that's going to block the way that you stamp. I put that away and I did need it didn't I? I needed the actual thank you stamp. So then our actual outline die layer is anchored down. We're going to go in, we're going to overlay it now I'm going to try not stick my head in the way, but I am going to line that into position. We're going to come in with our stamping platform. We're going to press. So therefore now my die cuts in the correct place. My stamps in the correct place. And I'm going in with our pale fig, which is our quick dry. Let's go in, let it settle and then press and I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this a couple of times I don't want the strong strength from like a crushed velvet but on the other hand I don't want it too light I do want the lilac but I want it to have a little bit of depth of colour so it's something that I tend to do quite a lot anyway with quick dries and that's following along with what Leanne will do quite often and that's three or four impressions and we've got thanks a perfect stamped impression in the right place because our die cut outline has been anchored down and then of course our stamp with our stamping platform is in the correct place so let's take all of these bits here I'm going to move all of that we can then take that off I'm going to rub any residual material material adhesive off I'm going to take a really quick drink and we can, I'm building up the suspense as to what I'm going to do with the glitter. So therefore, let's take our layers, 
And then on the back, I'm going to use my tacky glue. I'm going to do a drop shadow when it comes to the lilac. I'm pressing the corner and then I'm going to maneuver that in. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. That'll stand out more when we put it onto our backdrop. So there's our thanks. And then I'm going to go in just with a dot, just on the back of the body. And then I'm going to press flat because then what I can do, once that's fully dried, which won't take long, I can then pull the wings up. I'm going to do the same with this next one. We're just on the back of the body, just there. And press. And then I'm going to do the same on this last one. And then we're going to press. And that is us pretty much ready to make our card. So the first thing actually we need to do, and I put those dies away, and I do still need to do one thing. So that smaller die that I used, so that three and a half by three and a half, what I need to do is I need to create an aperture. Now for that, I'm actually going to go a little bit of a jaunty angle, which is not like me. It's not like me at all. I'm going to put my tape down and then we're going to come in with our plates. So let's go in frosted and then top plate. I'm going to align these ones up. That's then going to go through. So that's going to create that perfect aperture within the middle. And then what it's also meaning is giving me somewhere to actually put my framework, my lilac frame. Out, take that out, take that out, and then we've got. Oh, let's just go back. Oh, I've a froze. Gosh, this weather today is absolutely horrendous. Maybe not the best day to be filming these, but hey. All right, let's hang fire just for a little bit longer. Hopefully, that's going to catch up. So if you can hear me, I'm not doing anything other than packing away my dies. You're not missing anything. Hopefully, there we go. I think we're back on track. Right. So we've got our aperture in the middle of our card here. So we're now good to go. What we're then going to do is let's go in with our adhesive sheet. Where's my square? Here we go. So we've got our adhesive back in. So let's peel that back in off. What I'm then going to do is let's take a bit of scrap printer paper, which I've got here. Pick that up. And then we're going to sprinkle our glitters. Remember, that's our acetate, and we've put a layer of our double-sided adhesive sheet over the top. Now, you do get the sprinkle. I take that out. And then all that I'm going to do is sprinkle all of the glitter over the back. Trust me, you use very, very, very little. Loads go back into the tub. So we're just going to press all that in. I'm going to then pop. And then we've got our sparkly acetate back in see here. I'm going to take all of that. Okay. Decant all that back in. Like so. Move all that into the way there. What I'm then also doing is I'm just going to stand up because I've got glitter all over me. And I'm just cleaning up all I go. Sparkly carpet. There we go. Right. So we can see here what we've then got is we've got our sparkly 
acetate background that we can see here. Then we're going to come along with that outer frame. Now for this one, I'm going, so that is our actual glitter layer. That's the front layer. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use my tacky glue for this. You will need to let it dry for a little few moments more. But we're going to add that all the way round. All the way round. And that one is then going to sit onto here. Now you can go right to the corner if you want. I tend to go just a little bit in and then I'll just trim all the way round. I prefer to trim all the way round and into like a, a corner. Let's press that in. And we're going to let that sit just for a moment or two. Let that grab. So obviously it's a non-porous surface, so therefore we just need to let that grab just a little bit longer. While we're doing that, we're going to have a little chit-chat just while I'm tidying up this little bit. I'll be intrigued to know what advent calendar door reveal or project will have been your favourite. You know, maybe have you got have you got a favourite so far, or maybe you, well, maybe you've got a favourite so far, or maybe not. Maybe you're going to wait until the end of the month, or right the twenty twenty fourth, to then decide what project's been your favourite. What um, what item, what door has been your favourite? I'm looking forward to hearing all that. You might already have a favourite at the moment, and then you know you know what happens in life open up another door later and then you find out actually that's my favourite. So uh, do feel free to wait until the 24th to let me know. But then that should be more than enough at the moment. And then we're going to trim all the way round. So we're going to trim all that excess off. So we're neating it up. And the reason that I'm putting the actual glitter acetate layer to the back of the frame is it just neatens it up when we actually add it to our aperture. Creates that neated edge. You don't have to worry about framing the back of the card blank. So there, I still need to let that grab for a little bit longer. But there we go, we've got our sparkly acetate layer. On the back, this time I am going to use my red liner. Where is? I'm not sure what I've done with my six mil, but I'll use the three mil anyway because that will be absolutely fine. Actually, the three mil will be better. So I'm going to go round that outer edge. Can use your tacky glue if you want to, but again, it's acetate. It's a non-porous surface so therefore you will need to let that grab for a little bit longer. We're going to take red liner tape, pop that all the way round, pop that on. I'm going to take that off, peel that off, and then bring in our layer, gonna open it up. And because we've got that perfect apertured frame, we've used that same die, that smaller die, we're gonna overlay and then we're gonna press. And because I put the acetate to the back of that lilac frame, it means we've got that neat edge. There's no adhesive have been seen. Now you can cut another lilac frame and stick that on just to properly neaten the edge, but you don't need to. The main thing is you, saw, you see no adhesive because of course we've sandwiched the acetate glitter layer behind that frame. So there's the basis of it. Then we're gonna come in with our sentiment and I am gonna go in, I'm gonna keep it at an angle. Let's take my foam pads. I want these ones, I want them to be a little bit higher. So these are four mil in height. Can be shallower if you want. 
or you can keep it flat if you want. These are 7mm by 7mm all the way round and then the actual depth of them are 4mm. And I'm going on to that glitter layer so therefore I'm going to give it a helping aid. So I'm just going to add just a little dot of the tacky glue. That's going to dry into the grains of the glitter cardstock. That's going to go there so let's bring that in there like so and then because these butterfly wings are dried let's lift them up let's do the same with these ones here so let's lift and lift and last but by no means least lift and then lift so I'm going to position them back once again gosh is that us frozen again oh my god hey this will be awkward if it's not actually freezing when it comes back to you guys watching at home and I keep saying it's freezing and it's not but it is on my screen anyway let's pop our butterfly down into there I'm going to go in with the largest one and then going to go in with the smallest one up to the top and press and then I'm going to come in with the middle one so now that I've done the top and the bottom I know kind of that perfect positioning for the medium one and then I'm going to go in with some dew drops that I've got here I'm going to do dot 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 and dot and I'm going to go in with the largest one pop that on there I'm going to go in with a smallest one which can go there yep there's there and then I'm going to go in with a medium one which can go there. Down at the bottom, I'm going to go in with another medium one. There. And obviously, the tacky glue will dry clear. And then I'm going to do, for to finish off, I'm going to do dot, 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 and dot, dot, dot. I'm going to go in with the really small ones. I'm going to add one, two, and then three, add them into there, like so. I'm going to turn that around, make it easier for myself. And go one, two, and then last but by no means least, three. The dew drops you could colour with your classic pens or tri blends or illustrating pens but that's it there is our six by six card where we've used that tub of glitter that we've got from behind door number 10 it's an iridescent glitter it's a 15 grand tub we've used our acetate double-sided adhesive sheets sprinkled the glitter on taken the excess off used the matte and layer dies to create that frame with your lilac linen cardstock Cut out six butterflies, three in lilac, three in white, offset them, and then added our thank you stamp and die, and then finished off with a few dew drops in with our acid, our um, matte and layer insert at the back, and then there we go. And that would fit, of course, onto five by five if you wanted it to, or of course, you can change the actual size of the matte and layer dies that you use. If you want to make it even smaller, you can, or larger, you can absolutely do that. But a nice way to be using up your acetate and your double-sided adhesive sheets. And there we go. That's what we can do. Who would have thought what you can do with glitter? Eh? Glitter and acetate. It's amazing the effect that you can get. And that's it. 
hopefully you enjoyed this one from door number 10 of our Crafters Companion Advent Calendar here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your company. Thank you so much for all the incredible love and support in the comments that you leave me within the comments of these tutorial videos. But we know what is left to do now. That is wait for another 24 hours and see what's going to be behind door number 11 of our Advent Calendar. So hopefully you can come along, tune in, join in tomorrow here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Until then, have a lovely rest of the day whatever time it is whenever you're watching this and we'll see you tomorrow for door number 11 bye